In this video, I would like to discuss about Azure Virtual Network and how you can use the NBA to filter the traffic. In this particular demonstration, we will be using Azure Firewall as an NBA. So the current model which you're seeing on the screen is a very regular hub and spoke model. So I have a hub VNet and then I have two spokes VNet. So we have a spoke VNet 1, spoke VNet 2. Inside the spoke VNet 1, we have VM uh, one which is under the subnet one and we have VM3 which is under the subnet two and on the spoke two we have v which is VNet2 and in that we have a subnet two and a VM2. Now the hub network has just VNet3 and it has a firewall also Azure firewall and spoke one and spoke two both are connected or peer with the hub network using VNet peering. So the reason why I am showing this broader uh, diagram is more about we will be covering different aspects and different scenarios in the future using these different uh, VNet and hub and spoke implementation. But the topic for today is more around filtering the traffic using uh, Azure Firewall. So the traffic which we are looking at to filter for today is more about the internet facing traffic. So the agenda is what we will be looking for is uh, if any internet based traffic gets generated from our VM1 which is under the subnet 1 inside the VNet1 then it should not directly flow from the VM to the internet. It should flow through the firewall into the internet. So what we will be doing now is I'll just uh, walk you through that yep so ideally the traffic would go something like this so it should start from vm1 and it will be going to the internet but this is not what we want what we want is any traffic which comes out from the vm1 first it navigates to the firewall so let me draw that so the ideal requirement is any traffic which is required to go on the internet should first go into the firewall and once it is received by the firewall, the firewall will validate if it aligns with the policies and rules uh, set up in the firewall. And if everything is successful, then that particular traffic will be navigated to the internet. So this is what we will be achieving today with the setup uh, which I have configured in Azure. So now navigating back to the Azure portal, so what we have on the portal side is exactly what I showed over on the on the visual diagram. So we have a couple of VMs, VM1, VM2, VM3. We have a hub and spoke network. So we have a hub, we have spoke1, spoke2, and we have uh, a firewall, which is Azure Firewall. Now, getting on the VMs, these are just regular VMs, nothing very special about it and uh, so what uh, what i'll be showing is mostly around the yeah the route tables so yeah so the way how you can achieve this particular implementation of routing all your traffic to the firewall is something which is uh, which is more about overriding one of the base policies or base routes which are set up by the vnet when you create a vnet in azure so what that means is I'll just quickly go to the Microsoft Docs. So inside the Microsoft Docs, uh, there is a concept around when you create a virtual network, there are three defaults, three default routes which are set up in the route table associated to the VNet. So you have a local VNet route, which is more about any communication between the subnets, which is inside a VNet. You have on-prem routes if you are using a gateway and connecting your on-prem environment. And then you have a default route. This is the internet-based route, so any direct internet connection. So what you can, uh, and just to show you how that gets, so these are the default route which gets configured in your route table associated to a VNet. Now you can basically override the route for the internet, which is 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, .0, 0 using your own user-defined route. And that's what we will be doing today. So what I have is I have a spoke one route table. So this route table is basically associated or will be associated to the spoke one. So that's why I've created the name accordingly. Now what I'm going to do over here is I will be creating a new route. And the reason for creating the route is I'll add additional route over here as a, with the route table, which would have that 0.0.0. .0, .0. 
Now, once you have your user defined route, it gets precedence over the default route, which is created by the system. And then what in, in that particular 0.0, .0 route, what I'll do is I'll map it to the next hop as my firewall. So any request which gets then generated for internet will use that route configuration and it will be landing into the Azure firewall. And in the firewall, I'll have the configuration for what is allowed to be navigated to the internet and what uh, should not go to the internet. So that configuration will be run through for the request and then the request either will go to the internet or will die at the firewall level, which is more about it will be dropped over there. So yeah, so we will be creating uh, addition to a specific user defined route. So what I'll do is basically I'll add the name and a couple of things associated to it. That's the name of my route. And uh, so next I will do is I'll provide the address prefix. So this is basically that 0, .0, 0 to uh, identify that it's uh, internet based traffic, which I am trying to override the internet based traffic route default route which i'll be route uh, overriding with this user defined route and then i provide what's the next hop which is my virtual appliance in this case azure firewall and i'll provide the ip address of my azure firewall so the ip address of my azure firewall is 172.17.1.4 we can go and validate that as well so let's go to firewall and that's my <coughs> private ip address 172.17.1.4 so this is what I am using in my route table as well. Now what I'll do is I'll just click. Uh, okay, no, before before doing that, what I'll do is I'll quickly walk you through the VM1. So this is our VM1, which is uh, running in Azure, and uh, as, as you can see, I can I can access uh, MSN.com. I can access it on both HTTP and HTTPS. So if I remove the S part and if I search, yeah, I can I can basically access the MSN through HTTP as well. And if I go and access google.com, so I can come and type yep, so I'll do an additional tab. And in that tab I'll look for uh, it's just a bit slow. So yeah, now I'll go for google.com and yep yeah, hopefully google should come yeah tick yep yeah. so i can go to google and i can press and search anything so yeah all looks all right now what i'll be doing is i'll go back over here and since i've already defined my uh, user defined route for bringing the next stop as my azure firewall i'll click ok on that so basically what that will do is it will add a route in my uh, route table so that should be pretty quick yep it's already done so if i yeah if i come over here maybe refresh yep so i can see that spoke one subnet one internet that's the uh, default route which i'm overriding it's basically taking to the next stop as uh, my firewall now the next thing is I need to basically associate this specific route table because the route table itself is just a silos. So I need to associate it to a specific subnet, which I have done over here. So what I have done over here is this is my spoke one subnet one, and I have attached this particular route table to that. So it's very simple. What you do is you basically click associate, you go and select your spoke. So your VNet, which is our, in our case spoke one, and then we select the subnet so in this case let's uh, I, I need to select subnet one because there is there is where i have my vm1 so i need to select my subnet one to associate it and, and impact the vm1 but that's already selected so i cannot add anymore but yeah if you want you can select subnet two and you can get it working so all that is pretty much done from the route table side so we have uh, user defined route we have the route table associated to a subnet now going back to our firewall so we need to have some rule in the firewall so that once the specific request which is generated by the vm once it receives the firewall then firewall should be able to basically identify if the request is legit and it should pass it on to internet if you have not provided any route any rules in the firewall it will drop all the traffic so in this case 
what I've done is I have defined an application rule collection. So there are different options. You can have a NAT network address translation, or you can have a network rule, or which is more about IP with source and destination based uh, concept. And then you can also have an application rule. So application rule is more about uh, which application would you like to uh, allow through the firewall. So allow or deny. So in this case, I've already configured one and I'll just walk you through that. So I have priorities. So the priority, as you know, it starts from 100 and it goes to, I think to 6,000 or something. But yeah, the lower the value, the higher the priority. It's as simple as that. Now in the actions, you basically provide whether you want to allow or deny whatever uh, particular FJD and you are about to use in the, in the, in the next step. Now, in the next step, we will basically define the target and FQDN. And what I've done is I've associated that I want to access MSN from VM1. And I'm just selecting the source type as IP. And this is my IP uh, address of VM1. So if I go to VM1, so 172.18.04, that's my IP address. And if I go back to the firewall, 172.18.04, that's my IP address. HTTPS443 is the port. And then uh, www.msn.com is what I want to access. So all look pretty all right. So I'll just leave that as is. And now if we come back over here and if I just try to, uh, because everything is enabled, so this current situation is that uh, the VM is associated to a route table and that route table, so I'll just quickly get over here what we have is we have a route table and we have defined the next route as uh, our firewall in that route table so what we expect is when we click this google search uh, um, google.com as a, and, and in the address bar and we search for it it should not be able to process it because we haven't defined that particular FQDN in our firewall. What we have in the firewall is uh, msn.com. So I would expect that when I use uh, msn.com, I should be able to access it through the VM one. So let me go back to the VM. And let me bring that over here. And if I refresh this browser, so as you can see, it says uh, turn. So it basically it's not allowing. So it has uh, it has disabled Google.com from accessing through this particular VM. And if I go to MSN.com and uh, if I refresh this, uh, it's a bit slow. I'll come over here and uh, I'll say Amazon.com. Yeah, so it, yeah, so as you can see, it uh, has because of, yeah, so I, I can access Amazon.com uh, and because that's uh, what I have enabled. Now, if I just change this from HTTPS to HTTP, as you remember, when I was configuring the MSN. Uh, as uh, FQDN, I specifically provided HTTPS. So hopefully when I put HTTP, it should not work. So if I come back over here and, and I am using HTTP as my request, and as you can see now, it says HTTP request to MSN from the source, which is 172.18.04, which is this VM1, is denied. So if I use HTTPS, I should be able to access MSN. Yep. So pretty much, yeah, it, it works uh, like that. So it's basically anytime, any other uh, website which you try to access. So if I go and say facebook.com, yeah, it would give the same uh, access denied because in my policies, I do not have anything for that. So yeah, this is pretty much quite straightforward, very easy how you can configure it. And uh, yeah, you can you can have these policies for wider FQDNs and, and, and stuff like that. As you can see, you can have for um, yeah entire asterisk.microsoft.com. So if you are having something like uh, uh, nested subdomains and stuff like that, you can even use this entire model. But yeah, it's quite handy, straightforward. And uh, yeah, going forward, what I'll be doing is I'll be using the same uh, design I've been spoke, and I'll be 
working out a couple of different other capabilities which we can achieve using the Azure network. Thanks a lot for uh, watching this and hope you had a good learning experience. Happy coding.